the reason I wrote the book is that I don't want the sacrifice that these people made forgotten. I don't want everybody to move on and think that they can just go on and forget about these people because most of them have just been left now and they sacrificed a lot. In 1983-84, Zanu PF came up against a political opponent, which was Zapu in those days, and they reacted with violence. And they sent the Fifth Brigade down to Matabi land. They launched Kukura Hundi, and they killed we don't know how many people—10,000, maybe 20,000 people. And then, well, whatever. 25 years later, there's a different, this time, a different political um, opposition, the MDC, and they launch they launched this operation. Let's finish them off, and they people this time instead of killing them they tortured them but thousands and thousands of people so when I look at it these two operations with almost of a quarter of a century between them but really very similar tactics and many of the same people involved still the same people at the top of of ZANU, of ZANU PF and you know I, people call it what was going on in 2008 some people call it politicide you know that you you're trying to destroy the structure of, of an opposition by scaring people by intimidating them so much Well, he's. I mean, it looks like he's going to stay. He's going to stay as as, as the top of Zanu PF and, and as the president in in a new election. I mean, it's a putative president, and the, the, if he does that at 86, it becomes more and more likely that when he dies, he will be in office when he dies, rather than saying I'm going to retire and nominating a successor and saying this is my successor and trying to transfer his own authority within Zanu PF on that successor. Instead, you have, whether it's Solomon Majuro, or Emerson Munangagwa, whichever one seems to be getting ahead, he, he, he does something to destabilize him so that nobody knows who the chosen successor is. So there would be instability. The, the danger is that there'd be instability within ZANU PF, never mind within the nation as a whole. It's not traditional sanctions. Mugabe says they're sanctions all the time, and he uses them as an excuse for not making the reforms that he is supposed to, that he's undertaken to make in terms of the GPA. And they haven't, they haven't worked, and, and, they're, and they're providing him with a very convenient smokescreen to drag his heels. And I'm just starting to think that maybe, maybe because they haven't worked, what if we just dropped them and then Mugabe wouldn't have this excuse? Then at least we would know where we stand. They haven't worked, they're proving useful to him. And I'm just, you know, it, they're, they're just really a gesture. And, and I just feel like maybe the t they're, more, they're causing more problems than, than, than solutions. big subject. I mean, you know, I'm, I haven't been in Zimbabwe this year, so I wouldn't want to um, I wouldn't want to give detailed commentary on the events on the ground. I would feel a fraud. I do, though, think that we'd be crazy to go into new elections without all the benchmark reforms having been established, all the ones that were supposed to be established by the GP in terms of the GPA. For one, we, we, we need especially freedom of the electronic media, radio in particular. You can't just have the ZBC having a monopoly because you know the, the, there's no point in going to elections under those circumstances. And there needs to be reform of the police and the courts and the things we know so well. Until that's done, and also the electoral role itself is a joke, that all needs to be done before we can go into an election. Otherwise, there's no point in having an election. It's difficult for the MDC because on the one hand, if they, go into, if they go into the next elections without the reforms being made, the likelihood is that those elections will be stolen from them again. If they boycott and say, no, no, we're not going to go into the elections un until these reforms are made, therefore we're boycotting, Mugabe will have the election without them, as he did in the second round of the elections in 2008, when Morgan said, Morgan Tangerai said he's not standing. Mugabe went ahead anyway and then declared himself the winner. It's a very difficult situation they find themselves in, but I think they would be wrong. It would be foolish to go into elections when, when, when it's not a level playing field, because they're just setting themselves up for defeat.